Hi, I'm Roxana, and I'm a product manager on Android. Today, I'll be discussing storage access on Android 11. Modern storage devices are the keepers of so many of our personal memories and information. This includes photos of our loved ones and videos of our most memorable days. And with so many of us now conducting business with our phones and tablets, often important files are stored on our devices, including financial and legal documents. Android's amazing app developer community has created countless apps to help us share our memories, edit our documents, and listen to our music. But until recently, storage access on Android hadn't evolved to ensure that apps could get exactly the information users want to share and no more. Today, we'll quickly go over the storage changes introduced with Android 10, and then we'll discuss in detail the new modifications we've added to improve the developer experience in Android 11. And we'll finish with some tips on migrating your app to use modern storage. Last year with Android 10, we introduced the concept of scoped storage. The idea is to organize shared storage into specific collections and limit access to broad storage. These are the changes introduced for apps targeting Android 10. First, apps have unrestricted access to their own storage, both on internal memory and external volumes. Second, shared storage is divided into four organized collections, pictures, videos, music, and downloads. And apps can contribute files to these organized collections without any permission. The storage runtime permission now only gives read access to shared pictures, videos, and music files. To access downloads or unorganized files, the user must give specific access via the document picker. Deleting or modifying media files that were not created by your app now requires user confirmation. And lastly, apps must request a new permission to access photo location metadata. While many apps have successfully migrated to scope storage on Android 10, we recognize that we didn't sufficiently satisfy all of the use cases in that release. Therefore, for apps targeting Android 10, we included the option to opt out of scope storage with a flag in the manifest called Request Legacy External Storage. Over the past year, we've heard feedback about the storage update from all kinds of developers. We know this change isn't easy for many apps, and we recognize the challenges involved with adapting to modern storage. In response, my team focused all our efforts in this release on adding improvements to Android 11, specifically to make the transition easier. And because we've made these changes, we now feel comfortable making scope storage mandatory for all apps targeting Android 11. There won't be an option to opt out. So here's what's new on Android 11. As an alternative to media store APIs, apps can choose to use other APIs, which rely on local file paths. This is likely to reduce or eliminate the amount of code you have to change when upgrading to target Android 11. We've created new, easier to use APIs for modifying media files and added the ability to make changes in bulk. For specific apps that can verify that they require the ability to read more broadly, we created a new special app access called All Files Access. App storage is now private from other apps, including external app directories. Let's go through each of these in more detail. With scope storage enabled on Android 10, apps were only able to access shared files using Media Store APIs, a collection of APIs specifically designed for working with index files in shared storage. These APIs identify files using file descriptors rather than local file paths. Media Store is a rich, efficient, and useful set of APIs that we will continue to innovate. So for most apps, this is still the best solution for working with shared files. However, your feedback showed us that disallowing APIs that use file paths, like Java Files API or native C and C++ libraries, cause significant compatibility issues between Android Pi and Android 10. 
Compatibility is important to us because we want to make it easy for apps to take advantage of each new Android release. So we decided the best thing we could do to help app developers migrate to scope storage was to find a way to allow them to use FilePath APIs while keeping the new privacy requirements. By leveraging Fuse, file system and user space, we were able to re-enable these APIs with scope storage. For example, now apps can successfully use FFmpeg, a popular multimedia framework. Under the hood, IO requests using file paths are actually delegated to the Media Store API. You can think of FilePath APIs in Android 11 as convenience API to the Media Store. You do not get any additional access to files you would have gotten by using Media Store APIs. This is simply a different way to implement your app functionality if you choose to. You can get the file path of a file in Media Store by looking in the data column. Because FilePath APIs now, now directly link to Media Store, anytime you create a new file, such as save a new photo using a FilePath API, it will be immediately added to the Media Store. This is helpful because then there is never delay, as there might have been on older versions of Android, between contributing files to shared storage and another app's ability to access them. However, this could cause some unexpected behavior if your app was previously operating under the assumption that the new file would not be indexed right away. So keep this in mind as you test your app on Android 11. The team has worked diligently to ensure there is minimal performance impact to using FilePath APIs. But if performance is vital to your app, we recommend testing both options to see what works best for your situation. So while Media Store APIs are still most likely to be the best way for you to access shared files on Android, you're now free to decide if you would like to use any other API or library instead. As I mentioned, Media Store is the richest set of APIs for accessing shared files. With Android 11, we've added three significant new features. First, as part of scope storage in the last release, we introduced a new requirement in which apps needed to get user consent before modifying or deleting a file it does not own. For Android 11, we created new, easier to use APIs to get this consent. One is called create write request and create delete request. With these, apps can request consent for modifying several media files at once. If you already own the files that you want to modify, you don't need to request user consent to modify them. We created a new media store concept of trash. You can think of this like the recycle bin on a PC. Apps can now choose to trash a file instead of deleting it. This gives the user a chance to recover the file later. Trash files will be hidden by default, but then can be displayed if an app wants to. A trashed item will be automatically deleted by the OS after 30 days. Trashed files can be untrashed at any time before its expiration by an app that has edit access to it or with user consent. We also created a new file status called Favorite. For example, in your gallery app, you may be accustomed to starring a photo you like so you can find it again more easily. Now this can work across apps. If your app has a user experience of picking from a list of all available photos, you now can choose to list the favorited photos first or highlight them differently. Similar to modifying files, apps must get user consent before trashing or favoriting files it does not own. However, the default gallery app on the device will never be required to prompt the user for any of these modifications. I am super excited to see how apps will take advantage of these new features. Most apps that work with shared files will have everything they need with the read external storage permission, which grants access to photos, videos, and music. And apps like PDF editors or document readers can use the storage access framework to request access to specific documents and downloads. However, there are some apps that truly require read and write permissions for all files in shared storage to carry out their primary purpose. Some apps are file managers and backup apps. Apps like these, which users rely on to move and modify all kinds of files, 
now have the option to request a new permission called All Files Access or Manage External Storage in Code. Manage External Storage grants write access to all files except those in foreign app directories. Because this is quite sensitive, it's not a runtime permission, but instead a special app access. This means it must be enabled by the user in settings, similar to notification listening or usage access. Apps that request all files access and publish to Google Play will need to be verified manually to ensure they have a legitimate purpose to request it. This is to protect users from inadvertently granting overreaching access to an app that might be malicious. The access will not be limited to specific categories of apps. Developers are so creative that we cannot list all the possible use cases. Instead, each app will be independently evaluated to check that there is truly no other reasonable way for the app to work without this permission. It has never been best practice to directly access files saved in another app's external storage directory. The best way for apps to share files are by using shared storage or content providers. To formalize this, on Android 11, no app will be able to access another app's external app storage. This includes all methods of reading files, media store, file path APIs, and the storage access framework. This is the one storage change that's not gated on target SDK. So if your app is accessing another app's data or you are allowing apps to access your storage, you will need to update to one of the approved methods in order to run as expected on Android R. To end, I will share some useful tips for migrating your app that we have learned by responding to your feedback and talking to our partners. First, if your app will be using file paths or all files access, which I discussed today, you will need to keep the legacy storage flag in your app's manifest. This is to ensure compatibility with users running your app on Android 10. If your app has a custom picking experience for selecting non-media files like documents, you should redesign it to use the storage access framework instead. This does not require any permissions. Remember, now modifying or deleting media files you do not own requires user consent. So use the new media store consent APIs. It is no longer advisable for your app to save files in a custom top-level directory. Doing so requires the storage access framework, which is not the best experience for users. And if your app is uninstalled and then reinstalled, it would lose access to those files. We suggest using organized media collections or your private app storage instead. If you use a top-level directory today, you should migrate those files before upgrading your app. We created a new manifest flag to help with this. If you want to share data with other specific apps, set up content providers. This is the most secure way to share files. I hope these changes will make it easier for you to update your app for scope storage. To help you with your migration, the Android documentation has been updated to reflect all of these changes. So check them out to get more details on everything I've discussed. We truly believe that this change will significantly protect our users from malicious apps. And we hope the ability to contribute media without requiring a runtime permission is a welcome change to streamline your app's user experience. I hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and stress-free. Happy developing. Mm -hmm.